Hi guys, Jess here with Key Tarot. I'm going to do a reading for the Twin Flame Collective. Alrighty. Uh, let's say a quick blessing and we'll just see what comes out. We're going to start with, um, we're going to talk about the Divine Masculine first, then we'll go to the Divine Feminine, then we'll look at kind of an over overview of where the relationship is headed between these um, two different energies within the Collective. Alright, let's say a quick blessing and we'll get rolling. Holy Spirit, thank you so much for being with us here today and in every breath that we take. We ask that you direct our hands, our hearts, our words, and our minds to work your will in our lives each day. Thank you so much, and please let these messages be received by those who are meant to hear them. Amen. Alrighty, let's see what we have for our Divine Masculine Collective. A little bit about the Divine Masculine Collective. We recently um, experienced a massive heart um, chakra awakening. All right. Yes, and throughout history, I'd say for the last at least 2,000 years, most of our divine masculines have been um, pretty open and cooking in their lower three chakra points. If you know anything about the chakra points on the body, we have seven main chakras that most people recognize. We have hundreds all over our body, but most people recognize the seven main chakra points, and we have had a, a major shift that's happened with the energy and the way that we access that energy within our physical bodies, our um, emotional bodies, our mental bodies, and within our spiritual bodies, all right? And throughout the last couple thousand years, most of our masculines have been really open and able to receive within those lower three chakra points, but their upper three chakras have been pretty blocked up. And we've had quite the opposite with the feminine energy, which is why it's been a difficult thing to get everything gelled and glued together. We've had the feminines that have had very open upper three chakras, but very sluggish and um, low moving lower chakras and quite the opposite with the masculines. So I know that this masculine collective for whom I'm reading tonight has experienced recently a major heart chakra opening. And and this is what is going to allow them to connect and reopen the throat chakra, the pineal gland third eye, as well as that crown chakra that is um, going to allow them to access their higher selves as well as the information that they need from a higher power. So this is a major shift that's happening for them. I ask you, if you are in communication with your divine masculine, to please be patient, be gentle, and be compassionate with the things that they're experiencing right now. So let's see what they have going on. Well, what do we have for divine masculine? And I mean, that heart chakra opening has really been within the last, I mean, it's been happening over the last few years, but really um, last week was a big one. I know that. Um, first card out, we have the lover's card. Cute. All right. So the lover's is the card of Gemini, but this seems to be where the divine masculine's head is. It looks like they're in a space where they are ready to start allowing love into their lives for the first time in a while in a different way than they have been processing it previously to now. This is someone who has love on the brain. Wow. Well, springtime's almost here, right kids? Oh, that's adorable. I got the ace of pentacles. Wow. Jeez, kids, I think we're just done. We'll just leave it at this. All right, it all looks good. No, we won't. But the Ace of Pentacles is my absolute favorite card to get in any kind of reading, whether it's a love reading, a financial reading, family, career, whatever. Ace of Pentacles is something you can take to the bank. This is an investment in yourself. This is an investment in something that is going to come to fruition, something that's going to bring something that's profitable into your life, something that you can um, hang your hat on. This is something you can invest in. And this masculine collective for whom I I am reading has love on the brain as well as wanting to invest in the right thing. They want to commit to something that is um, healthy and something that's going to grow into something even better than what they already have. Thank you very much. I've got the two of swords in reverse. This is someone who, um, Although they're having these feelings, these heart ch chakra openings, these awakenings, there's someone who's still a little bit blocked up in that mental space with this two of swords energy in reverse. Someone who um, they know that they need to make a decision, but they're really, really struggling with it. They're, they're having a lot of trouble accessing um, their higher selves right now. They're having a hard time understanding how they are going to get from where they are to where they want to be. Um, but they have a lot of positive intention behind this. Let's see. Thank you. 
This is someone who may be at a crossroads and not really sure how to get there. I got the Six of Pentacles in reverse. This masculine collective for whomever I'm, I'm reading. Um, the Six of Pentacles is the energy of unrequited love. It can be unreciprocal, unreciprocated feelings. Um, this can be an energy of someone who feels like they're giving much more than what they are receiving. They've been feeling unsupported in some way and they're getting tired of it. They're getting tired of it, but this is what's going to push them to go in a different direction. Good job. I get the impression that this collective has put up with a lot in a lot of ways and I think they're getting tired of it. They're sick of it and they want something better for themselves and for the future. They want love to look different, to, to look different in their lives. I got the justice card in reverse. This can indicate um, divorce. This can indicate um, problems in legal matters. This can indicate people um, possibly in this in this collective who have struggled to make the right choices and they're now dealing with the repercussions of that. Um, it kind of, I'm hearing, it doesn't matter. Just get me the heck out of here. That's what I'm hearing. Okay. All righty. Perfect. I have the five of pentacles here. This is someone who's experienced possibly a financial loss or about, they're about to. Um, that's sometimes what comes from divorce. This is what comes from separating from something that they had previously um, committed to in some way. I think that they understand this, this divine masculine collective. It can be the energy of being separated from someone that you love very much. And it's the indication that there was a lot of, there's a lot of growth that's needed here for this masculine collective. I think they know that. I think they know that the choices that they've made could create some kind of financial fallout in their life. There could be some kind of loss of stability because of um, where they want to go in the future. I think that we've had them be quite disheartened in the past with some of their romantic relationships, their career relationships in the past that they've chosen for themselves and they know that they need to get out of it. And they're aware that this is going to create some instability in their lives. Now let's come over here and look at this divine feminine energy. Where are we at? I got the Knight of Pentacles out for the Divine Feminine. Very, very good. It comes out on its side. This Divine Feminine is trying to really decide what it is they want to commit to as well. This is someone who's trying to do things right for the first time. This Feminine Collective is someone who's ready to go slowly. And they're really, really trying to invest in themselves. Mm -hmm. Good job. So we have both um, the Masculine and the Feminine here finally getting down to brass tacks with what they want, how they feel, what they want for their future, and what they want to invest in. Now, this Knight of Pentacles, though, whenever it comes out on its side... We kind of have the feminine sort of at a standstill, kind of, um, I'm hearing waiting, just waiting. Um, that's not necessarily a bad space to be in as long as you are actively waiting, yes? I got the Queen of Wands in reverse. That's Aries, Leo, Sagittarius, feminine in reverse. Hey, this can be kind of a needy, attention-seeking sort of energy that may be coming from this feminine. This feminine may be getting tired of waiting for this masculine to come in, and so they may be starting to um, see other people. The Queen of Wands actually um, has to be said, the Queen of Wands is in reverse is known for promiscuity. They're known for, um, again, I said attention-seeking behavior. They can be someone who is um, looking for love in all the wrong places, possibly because they're just so tired of waiting on this masculine collective to kind of get it together. And let's be real, it's been a long haul. What did I say though? Patience, patience. These masculines are just having these massive awakenings and the feminine energy is going to have to understand. Yes, I, I get it. Yes, you read ahead in the textbook. Yes, you received the Cliff's Notes version. Yes, you started your work years ago. Patience, because these masculines did not. These masculines are still catching up to where you are feminine. I have the Three of Swords in reverse. This feminine collective may have experienced a breakup in the past. It's something that's already happened when we have the Three of Swords in reverse. And this feminine already started the process of healing from whatever that ending was. Could have been with a karmic relationship, something that she stayed in for far too long, something that was quite dis damaging to her self-esteem in some way. And she's starting to rebuild herself slowly and surely, and she's starting to heal from whatever that was. I'm hearing I'm ready. I don't know if you are divine feminine. Let's see.
Ace of Swords in reverse. There's no communication from this feminine to this masculine. She's not talking to them. She may be at a distance from them. Um, she's not talking to a lot of people, actually. This feminine energy is kind of cutting herself off from a lot of different relationships. There may have been some, um, there may have been several small breakups <laughs> in the past with this feminine collective energy where they weren't seeing the results that they wanted. They weren't seeing the commitments that they wanted. Um, they weren't seeing um, just the relationship that they wanted to align themselves with for a long time. So I'm hearing like, I'm done. I'm so over it. I want what's for me and I don't want to settle for anything less and I don't want to sit around and wait for it any longer. Okay. And I got the King of Cups in reverse. That's that uh, Cancer, Pisces, Scorpio, masculine energy. Now the King of Cups, whenever it comes out with our, our feminines here, it's an energy of someone who knows how they feel about a person, but they're not talking about it. They're not telling anyone. I get the impression that this feminine collective, whomever I'm reading for, if this is in fact your reading, that you're in a space of um, non-communication with your masculine as well, but, but there's still like a lot of love from afar. Um, there's someone who knows how they feel about a person, but they are definitely not sharing it at all. How is this going to get cleaned up? This is kind of a mess here. Let's see here. Let's use this Tarot of Dreams by Ciro Marchetti. All right. And let's kind of look and see where the, where this relationship between this masculine and feminine collective is headed this week. All right. These things are baby steps. You know that? These things are baby steps because the Twin Flame Collective, it's more than just people getting together and loving one another. It's really about the ascension of the planet. And whenever you start to really understand the dynamic between Twin Flame Masculine and Feminine, um, you understand that it's not so much about you. And so you have to you have to suspend your, your desires. You have to suspend um, your beliefs in what you think should be happening. Because you may, um, things things just take time. They take a lot of time. I know, I'm sick of hearing it. You're sick of hearing it. Let's see how this is gonna shape up. I'll just keep reading cards. How about that? I got the world card out here. Um, we're closing out final chapters here. What I always say about the world card is it's not about, um, it's not about ending one chapter and starting the next. It's about finishing the entire book, the entire volume of this section of your life, whether it was a, a seven-year cycle, a nine-year cycle, a 13-year cycle, whatever. It's about closing up that um, volume, putting it on the shelf and starting the next volume of your life, tying up loose ends so that you can get to the next um, stage, wherever you're supposed to be next. This world card is major. These are major changes and major shifts that are happening and they're happening fast fast. Faster than we, and what was I saying? Patience, patience, but now I'm hearing that it's going to be happening faster than we think. Ay, ay, ay. All right, I'm going to get some timeline information for you here in a minute. Thank you. Aha! Uh -huh. I got the fool card out here. So this is fantastic, right? So the world card is the final card in a traditional deck of tarot. And the fool card is the beginning card in the major arcana of the traditional tarot, right? So we have one ending that brings about a brand new beginning. Very, very good. Yes. Every new beginning comes from some other beginning's end. Who's the bigger dork? Me for quoting it or you for knowing which song it comes from. Let's be around. Okay, so what else? We've got a brand new beginning that's about to start. We got the magician card out here that comes on its side. We have two people who are finally starting to see what it is they need to do to shape up their future, to design their future for themselves. And these are people who are highly developed psychically, highly developed intuitively, highly developed as far as their ability to manifest for the future. Good jobs. Magician's card of Aries. Um, but it's really about being able to um, to start being in control of your life for the first time in a long time. Most divine masculines and divine feminines have dealt with a lot of upheaval in their lives, whether it was um, with a challenging childhood that left them with a lot of foundational um, inner child wounding or something like that. It can be all the way up to dealing with um, issues of poverty, addiction, um, abuse, um, neglect, all sorts of things that have um, caused this collective to feel somewhat powerless. And now we have a return 
of instinctual power that's coming towards the masculine and the feminine both within this collective. And we see people who are starting to take matters into their own hands. But here's the thing about the magician. There's a difference between magic and magic. There's a, a difference between illusionary magic and real true magic. Real true magic doesn't come from you. It comes from a higher power. It comes from aligning yourself, not with your wants and your desires, but with the desires that are really, really meant for you. Clear out your mind, go into a meditative space, access your higher power, whoever that is for you. For me, it's Jesus. I'm a Jesus freak and I love it. Um, but go ahead and go into that meditative spa space and speak with whomever your divine mentor is and align yourself with what that entity wants for your life as opposed to what your little three-dimensional self might want today or tomorrow because as you know as a human being your wants and your desires are changing rapidly daily monthly yearly whatever but your higher power is always going to have your best interest and they are never going to leave you lead you astray so whenever you are working with manifestation energy like this with this magician card that's really prevalent and present here make sure you are aligning with your highest self your highest good and make sure you're not asking um, for anything less. You refuse to settle for anything less than what your source of God wants for you. All right. Perfect. I'm going to put these back in, except it's not perfect. It's too many cards at one pull. Perfect. That's perfect. All right. I got the Ten of Cups in reverse. Um, this this collective here for whomever I'm reading, um, we have a dissolution of a family that dynamic here. Um, the Ten of Cups in reverse, it can be the ending of something that you really had invested all of your heart in, something that you had invested everything in and all of a sudden it's falling apart the reason it's falling apart is because it was a foundation that was built upon sand um for whatever reason it could have been again an energy of um settling in the past years for something it could have been the energy of not being honest with yourself or giving yourself less than what you truly deserve with that ten of cups in reverse um we're gonna have a lot of fallout with this we can have divorce on the table here for the masculine or the feminine collective here. We could have um, a lot of upheaval that may be happening here in the near future. And these are messy energies to work through. Let's be honest. I have the strength card that came out with that. Golly geez. So the strength card is the card of Leo, but let's be honest, it's it's being called to be strong in a situation. We aren't called to be strong unless there's something to be strong about, unless there's something that needs to be conquered, unless there is something that is scary. That's when we're called, that's when we call in the energy of strength. Strength can be asking for help when you need it. Strength can be leaning on others. Strength can be um, looking outside of yourself for guidance. It can be all sorts of different things. There are lots of ways to be strong. But really and truly, we are not asked to be strong unless there's a reason to be. This Ten of Cups in reverse is a lot. It's a lot of upheaval for our entire collective. And it's going to take some time for all of those things to get ironed out and for healing to begin. And I've got the Four of Cups in reverse. The important thing that people are starting to understand and remember for the first time in a long time is... Um, a focus on your higher self and a focus on this ace of cups here, right? So the four of cups, really the story behind the four of cups is someone who doesn't want what they've been offered any longer. But specific to this deck, this tarot of dreams by Sarah Marchetti, it's the idea that you need to focus on yourself, on your highest self, um, and get rid of all of these thoughts down here. Get rid of these things that don't serve you any longer. And it's kind of like eyes on the prize kind of mentality over here. And we have this collective that's finally starting to do that. It doesn't mean you're being selfish. That's not what I mean at all. It doesn't mean that you're just walking away from people that you'd committed to for years and years. That's not what that means. What it means is that there's a commitment to oneself for the first time in a long time. And it doesn't have anything to do with... Um, social um, 
constrictions or um, expectations. It doesn't have anything to do with um, keeping up with the Joneses or having the most money or the nicest cars or whatever was important in the past. This is really about um, getting clear with your place in the body of Christ or in part as part of the, the cosmic universe that is supplying us with endless life energy. And I think that people, I know that sounds kind of um, vague and elusive, you know, but I think people are starting to understand what that really, really means to them. And they're starting to understand what true love and, and true self actually is, which is what we need in this place, what we need on this planet. We need ascension, we need awakening, and we need awareness. We need people who are focused on helping themselves and also helping one another around them. We need a refocus to, um, loving one another in healthy, positive ways. And whenever we see in our lives that that hasn't been happening, we are um, getting aware enough and awakened enough to know that we have to take ourselves out of those situations or the toxicity continues on. Um, and I think that we have a collective here within the twin flame groupings here where we have people who are very much wisened to that. Very good. I've got the justice in reverse also indicating divorce. Um, Golly, that's twice out for that guy. So we could have some people who are experiencing endings, major endings, um, legal battles, tying up loose ends. This can be divorce again. Um, we've got divorce, we've got divorce, we've got divorce. These are final endings from commitments that you had previously committed to. Let me grab one more deck and see if there is anything else you guys want to say about this. Because while it sounds dark, um, I wouldn't wish divorce on anyone. I wouldn't wish it on my worst enemy. What a nightmare, right? But sometimes it is necessary in order for people to um, become the person that they maybe want to be in the future. And this doesn't have to be a marriage that is being ended here. This can be careers that people had aligned with that did not function in the way that they needed them to. These can be family dynamics that um, were extremely unhealthy or toxic that um, we have this entire collective disconnecting from. And I feel like ultimately these are going to be very healthy choices, um, but they are very discordant right now. Getting through them is very, um, it's very chunky and it's unstable ground that um, both the feminine and the masculine are walking on here specifically the masculine. Let's look here. Oh no, we got the justice card out again. Oh golly. Three times out. We've only used three decks, kid. I was right. Justice card in reverse three times. Yowza. All right. So we definitely have some major changes, major changes happening legally, possibly paperwork. Definitely. Um, justice is the card of Libra. FYI. Hmm. And we have the Nine of Cups that comes out here. There's somebody here who's trying to focus on what it is that's going to make them happy for the first time in a long time. And actually doing this, letting go of these things, and which is not easy. I am getting like a lot of pain here um, for, for this entire collective. It's very much a lot of heartbreak that's happening. But this Nine of Cups right here is about three-dimensional wish fulfillment. It's kind of like that birthday candle wish that finally comes true. Um, we have some, we have a lot of gratification coming towards this collective. Um, the Nine of Cups is the minor arcana version of the star card for me. And it is indicative of... Um a lot of blessings coming towards you, things that are going to make you happy for the first time in a long time. There are reasons to smile. And we are, uh, once again, we have the energy of the magician out. That's the second time out for that guy, too, wherever he is laying around here. So there we go. There we go. All right, so we have the magician again, the card of Aries out. These are people who are taking matters into their own hands. These are people who are starting to manifest from a higher power, from a higher source. And they're saying, God, what do you want in my life? What do you envision for me? Because I understand, as a mere mortal, sometimes I get it wrong. Obviously, I did in the past. Please teach me. Please align me with you your will for my life. That is sort of the, um, that's kind of the speech that I'm hearing from this collective, which is very beautiful. It's very right on, spot on. Good job, guys. And uh, with that, we have the energy of the Seven of Pentacles. This is a collective that's just simply waiting to see how things are going to shape up, waiting to see if everything that they've invested in is going to um, 
become prosperous. And it's, again, it's an energy of just waiting. And I know that the feminine has been in that space for some time and that can be quite frustrating, um, but do not wait um, without being active. Be, be very active in your waiting time if that's something that you choose to do to wait on another individual or wait for another um, masculine to join forces with you in whatever way, whatever that means to you. Um, make sure you're out there living and, and growing for yourself. This Seven of Pentacles, though, is definitely inspiring a need for a lot of patience within this collective. And I have the Four of Pentacles, very good. Um, this is someone who's a little bit nervous about what's to come. They're a little nervous. They don't wanna reach out. They don't wanna talk to anybody about it. Both both parties, the masculine and the feminine within this collective, they're very shy. They're very worried about how to communicate. No one's talking yet. No one's saying anything yet. No one's reaching out yet. Still feeling quite stuck. But I have the Fool card out here. Very, very good. This is a brand new beginning. This is something new and we're on the cusp of this. I'm going to look at timelines here and I'm going to see if we have any communication coming in for this collective between Divine Masculine and Divine Feminine whatsoever. Because right now I'm not seeing any communication. I'm still, in, still seeing two um, kind of separate feeling energies. And obviously our masculine and our feminine are always going to be in union, whether you know it or not. People are always talking about physical union but you will always be in spiritual union with your twin because you are. The trick is to understand that you are. That's why you have the telepathic communication. That's why you have all the dreams about one another. That's why you end up uh, running into each other in you know, the right place, the wrong place, the right time, the wrong time, whatever. Um, there's a reason why you are quite connected. And both of these individuals in, within this collective, both the masculine and the feminine, wants to start anew with one another. They want to start something new that feels much better for them. Um, but there is still no communication. <laughs> I've got the Knight of Swords here. I was just going to say April. I was hearing the word April. Um, I think that um, for whomever I'm reading for here, I think that you're going to be ending up meeting your counterpart within the month of April, running into them in some way. There will be some kind of communication that comes in. It's pretty rapid communication with this Knight of Swords. This is someone who has something to say and they have a lot to say and they want to say it quickly. They want to be honest. Um, they want to come in and they want to speak their minds about something. They want to be clear and truthful. Honesty. Honesty is something that I'm hearing very, very clearly. They want to take action towards communication. I'm hearing April. I've got the Ace of Wands and I got the King of Pentacles out here. King of Pentacles, Virgo, Taurus, Capricorn, and this Ace of Wands. There is someone here who very much wants to invest in the future and they um, are really feeling quite attracted to you, both the masculine and the feminine. Ace of Wands is highly sexually passionate, but this King of Pentacles wants to make sure they're doing it right. They wanna make sure they set up the right things for the future. They don't wanna screw this up. They wanna make sure they do it right this time and they wanna make sure it's gonna be low drama low drama with that king of pentacles that ace of wands all right there's a lot of sexual attraction here um there's a lot of desire here and there's a lot of um compatibility here but we we're just kind of um i'm hearing like dialing it down a notch in order to make sure we're making good decisions for the both of us and i feel like that's coming from both sides of the collective i really like what i'm seeing here anything else you want to say about this before i cut you loose let's look We have the Six of Swords in reverse. This is somebody who feels like they can't move forward. They don't know what to do. I'm telling y'all, communication is key here. I mean, that really is the biggest issue here is communication. What did I say? It's the lower chakras communicating with the upper chakras and ver vice versa. It's getting all, everything into alignment in both individuals so that when they do finally come together, there's a nice balance and there's a good flow of energy um, that's going to help balance the entire planet. That's the point of the Twin Flame Collective. Although it's been quite um, perverted by the modern esoteric in industry and there are a lot of people who throw the term twin flame around and they don't really know 
what it actually is about. It's an incredibly spiritual connection, obviously, because these are two people who share portions of the same soul, not just split in half, but there are portions of them. That's why, again, you will have the tele the telepathy, you'll have the dreams, you'll have, um, again, running into one another at, at certain times. But this Six of Swords indicates someone who's really struggling to move forward. People who are really struggling to move on, possibly even struggling to move physically on from a space. Again, we have a lot of um, ending energy here with that um, Justice card out three times in reverse like that. Uh, again, it can indicate divorce. We can be um, tying up a lot of loose ends. And we have two people who aren't really sure how to get from point A to point B. And like I said, this is an energy of... Um, you're going to need to be patient. You're just going to have to be patient with this. And I know, I know I'm sick of saying it. You're sick of hearing it. These things take time, but look, we got the Ace of Pentacles out again, right? Ace of Pentacles, Ace of Pentacles. There is no way that this can fail. You guys got to stop getting all up in your head about these relationships, these twin flame relationships, because let's be honest, if you actually share part of your soul with another person, which is the basis of a twin flame relationship, you will never be apart from one another. So stop putting so much pressure on this relationship for it to look a certain way, feel a certain way, be a certain way understand that it just is and you don't even have to worry about it it's going to unfold the way that it needs to your job is learning how to let go and move forward to be the very best person that you can be so that you can vibrate at a very high level and attract other people who are vibrating at that same level be the divine feminine because the divine feminine attracts the divine masculine it may not be the divine masculine you thought it was going to be, you may be surprised, but you'll know it whenever you see it. You'll know it when you come into connection with a, a masculine or a feminine energy, that a divine masculine or a divine feminine counterpart, because there will be an energetic exchange. You'll know it immediately whenever you do. Um, yeah, so stop putting so much pressure on yourself, all right? Again, I have this Ten of Cups in reverse twice out with the Ten of Cups in reverse. This tells me that there are a lot of changes that have to happen emotionally for both of these individuals um, to progress further. And there's still a lot of heart at, a heartache um, I'm getting for this masculine collective. They're still going to have to work through a lot. They're still going to have to make a lot of changes. I can't find the other Ten of Cups. It's in here somewhere. It's just a big old mess on my table over here. And probably a big old mess in your life too, right? Um, but this Ten of Cups indicates a possible dissolution of a family dynamic. It can indicate a dissolution of a major foundation in one's life that's going to affect someone very emotionally. Ten of Cups in reverse indicates a lot of tears, a lot of emotional fallout. And we're going to have to be respectful and be patient and allow both the feminine and the masculine in this in this collective to get through that and to understand how that um, works in their life and how that's going to shift things and change things for them in their lives. All right. Again, patience, patience, patience. That is the key with these divine relationships. And I'm so sorry to tell you that. And I know you're sick of hearing it. But in any case, I'm going to see you guys next Tuesday. I'll be back with another Twin Flame Collective reading and we'll see where things have shifted next week. All right. Until then, um, I love you very much and I will catch up with you soon. All right. Bye.